Hi, and welcome to At the Table with Lisa and Warren. This is our first podcast that we're going to be doing monthly, and today we're meeting with Chris Castred from the sewer department in Warren, and who is also our township engineer. Hi, Chris. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Lisa. I'm happy to be here. It's a it's an honor and a pleasure. Thank you. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the sewer system in Warren, and what is the history of the sewer system? Did we always have sewers? Was the township always in charge of them? The, the sewers in Warren date back to at some point in the 60s, from the best we can tell. Uh, that's when the Warren Township Municipal Governing Body decided that they were going to begin uh, collecting sewers rather than just having septic systems, collecting the sewage and directing it to a wastewater treatment plant. Uh, in 1972, the municipality created the Warren Township Sewerage Authority, uh, which was a separate governmental agency, which then became responsible for o owning, operating, and maintaining all of the sewers in Warren Township. Uh, that lasted uh, through the decades until 19, oh, I'm sorry, until 2022. So July 1st of 2022, the Warren Township governing body dissolved the authority and all responsibilities now fall under the sewer department within the municipality. So how many s sewer lines does Warren Township have and where do they go? We have, we have six different uh, sewer service areas. Um, roughly speaking, from the top of the mountains, the southern half of the town flows down to through Bridgewater to the Somerset Raritan Valley Sewerage Authority. Uh, that's roughly uh, 2,000, 2,500 or so uh, connections that flow in that direction. Uh, then the other portions of the town, the northerly part, is divided up into five different. We have a flow, small flow that goes through Wachung to the Middlesex County Utility Authority. Uh, we have a small flow that flows to Berkeley Heights uh, that treats our water. And then we're responsible for three wastewater treatment facilities. We have one, the oldest, at Indian Rock Road, uh, which was constructed, uh, to the best of our knowledge, in the 60s. And then we have another at the intersection of King George Road and Route 78 at exit 36. That's what we call stage four. That was constructed a little later. And then stage five is off of Liberty Corner Road behind the Glaxo Smith Klein building, office building. So we have three wastewater treatment facilities that treat the sewage. And we have 20, we call them pump stations, but they're, they're smaller than your typical pump station. They're really just lift stations to get the sewage in some of the low lying areas of Warren up into our gravity system. That's so interesting. I've been in Warren since the 80s, and I didn't even know that any of these pump stations and treatment stations existed. They're very well hidden. We so do our best to screen them. <laughs> they really, I it's amazing. So what happens when we flush what we flush? Where does it go? It goes to these treatment facilities? It does. Um, so anything that's flushed at your house, and if you have a septic system, it's going into your tank, um, and hopefully you're having that maintained every three years, having the tank pumped. Um, if you're connected to the sanitary sewer system, um, it's going by gravity to one of our three treatment plants or to the Somerset Raritan Valley Sewerage Authority. Um, so what you put in the toilet and in your sinks is very important uh, because we have to deal with it at the treatment line, at the treatment end. So that's why um, you mentioned at the last township meeting it's so important to be mindful of what you're flushing. And I know you mentioned no dental floss, no uh, rags of any sort. What happens when we flush those things? It, does it cause problems? And then is that more money for the taxpayer? Yes. We, we have at each one of the pump stations and also the treatment facilities, we do have trash racks uh, and climber screens uh, to try to eliminate the mechanical failures that some of this material costs uh, causes um, but sometimes they're overcome with the material themselves and the clogs get into the inner workings of the plant wow that's a shame yeah and i didn't realize that dental floss was such a big offender i didn't think that something that tiny can cause such a problem right and it's really just it doesn't break down so we have 
yeah. handy wipes, paper towels, anything that doesn't degrade easily. Um, the feminine hygiene products, paint and primer solvents affect the, the chemical balances of the water. Um, obviously, construction materials would, would cause issues. Um, rags, uh, other cloth for cleaning uh, creates issues for the mechanical pieces and the, and the gearing. Um, and then duct tape, athletic tape, anything that doesn't break down, and dental floss. I just, I, I can't imagine that people are flushing these duct tape. Athletic tape. Right. I mean, I guess they think oh, I'll flush it, and they don't think about where it goes. It's and it doesn't 100%. just go in the sewer. It's winding up in these treatment plants that somebody has to either clean out and or fix because it broke something. Correct. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, all right. Are, and are sewers better than septic? Like, would it be better than to just keep your septic system? In more rural areas, uh, septics are, are perfectly fine, um, depending on the soil condition and the groundwater. Uh, levels, uh, septic systems properly maintained can operate perfectly fine. When the population density increases, uh, the septic systems can tax groundwater um, or to a point that there's no more room for septic systems. And that's when the sanitary sewer systems are much more advantageous. Okay. And at the end of my driveway, for example, there is a sewer if that gets clogged, that's not where my wastewater goes from the house, right? That's just rainwater runoff. But do they all wind up in the same pipe? They don't. In Warren, we have separate storm sewer and separate sanitary sewers. They're completely separated. Uh, in some of the older towns, Jersey City, uh, Hoboken, they had combined sewers. Oh, um, so, yes, at, there's a big push to separate the storm sewer from the sanitary. Very okay. important. Well, this was a very interesting conversation. Thank you so much, Chris. And I will put this information on the website so people know what should not be flushed to keep our sewer system in Warren functioning properly and to keep the cost to the taxpayer down. That would be great. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. You're welcome.